Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the 808 Podcast, a podcast where I interview business owners, CEOs, marketing directors, whoever else I feel like. It is four questions in eight minutes and eight seconds because 808 looks like Bob and here we go. Question number one, in a few sentences, tell me who you are and what do you do? Hi, Bob. My name is Frank Cohen. I'm the CEO and the founder at Clever Mo. We do advertising for small businesses and for digital marketers. Boom, right to the point. Love it. Question number two, Frank, what advice would you like to share? Go. You know, the biggest problem for digital marketers now is that when they need to create a lead magnet, you know, they have their website, they might have a Shopify store, they might have a landing page. The biggest problem for them is like, how do you navigate through all of these digital ad networks and get people to pay attention to your site? Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, what I'd say is that, you know, it, there's plenty of resources out there. Like if you did a, a search on YouTube, you probably find a thousand different videos. The, the problem really becomes like, how do you navigate through that and make sense for yourself so that's, that it's actionable? And uh, that, that's really where my expertise has been for the last you know, 30 years or so, kind of making sense of these kind of technologies and then putting them into practice for you. So uh, I've done that for um, uh, Symantec, got them into the uh, antivirus business. I did it for uh, Apple, uh, getting them onto the web. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I take technology and make it easy for digital marketers. So for the people watching right now, what are some things that they need to look for when they're going through all this information? What mm -hmm. are some red, like red flags to say, hey, you're listening to someone who's a snake, a snake oil salesperson? Yeah, the, the biggest red flags that I find are the complexity of what they're trying to teach you. I mean, like uh, setting up a, an online store like with Shopify or Etsy is pretty simple and straightforward, but then, uh, you know, it probably take you about six hours in total. But then running your first Facebook ad, probably three or four days before you like figure out that you've done it wrong. And then you've spent, you know, a whole bunch of money and, you know, there, it's not like Facebook's going to be your best friend and say, oh, we forgive you. Right. <laughs> we'll so give you some, your money back. So on the Facebook ad side, what are some things that you've noticed people do when like they're first starting out that they screw up on? So uh, the first thing is that uh, the ad itself might not look like the site that they're uh, promoting. So you might see an ad that has beautiful graphic on it. You click through and you see something completely different on the landing page uh, that, that, the, that the person clicking on your ad gets to. And, and when, when you do that, uh, that's the easiest way of creating what they call a bounce. Uh, basically somebody takes a look at your site and they bounce straight off of it because they don't trust that the ad that they saw is for the product that they're seeing on your site. That's probably- right, Actually, I'm gonna give you a perfect example of something that I experienced. Go on, on Facebook, there's an ad saying, hey, if you if you are doing technology, your yeah. clients can get a tax, a tax rebate. Right. And I'm gonna show you how. So I'm like, oh, that's a cool concept. Let me go click on the ad. The yeah. 10 minute ad for why you should hire them or 10 minute video didn't get that information anywhere in there. So I'm like, yeah. okay, let me go check the email. Nothing about that in there. So I even started, you know, commenting on the ad and sharing and saying, this guy's a liar. That's right. And, so, you know, not only did they not gain your trust, right, they, they, they blew it. Oh, um, yeah. I'll never work with that guy. He'll never get on my podcast. You know, basically, I remember his name. I'm going to mention his name, but he's on my blacklist, you know, yeah. pretty much and forever. For, for good reason, he messed up. The, the second thing I'd say is, is keeping it simple. Like if your ad is for a very simple purchase, like a product that's under $10, then don't have that click from your ad go to a website where they can like take 20 different paths before they find the product. Um, send them to a landing page. And that landing page should just have maybe four things on it in total. Maybe a, a product image, a paragraph about what it is and a call to action, that's it. Yeah, totally agree there. Let's get to question number three. This is time for shout outs. Go for it. Well, um, so I find that a lot of people are expecting that they can use social media to kind of uh, organically get the word out about something. And this is in these really giant companies. So like HP, it was Clever Mo's first customer. They launched the HP NV printer up to the International Space Station. Right, and terrific story to tell. And yet they thought like, oh, maybe we could post one once or twice on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, and that, that would get us the attention to that printer. It just doesn't work that way. Right. There, there's no more inventory in Facebook or Twitter or any of the other social ad networks for organic growth. Um, so uh, what we recommended was a paid advertising campaign in support of their great news about launching that printer. Perfect, perfect. And do you have any suggestions of people I should have on the podcast? 
Oh, yeah, certainly. So um, right now, I'd say the biggest problem for digital marketers is that when they're running their ads, they're expecting the ad networks to uh, be doing the targeting for them mm -hmm. based on interest. Well, that isn't going to work anymore because of a gigantic privacy issue that both Google and Apple are taking um, uh, are doing right now. Uh, Google and Apple both said recently, uh, no more what they call third party cookies, right? Th this would be a cookie that tracks a person from one social ad network to a, a site and then to another site. None of that's uh, going to work anymore. And so the ad money that the digital marketers have probably are gonna take a really big hit over the next year as the industry tries to figure this out. So I would recommend that you go to uh, the, um, uh, the GDPR privacy people at Apple and also the same at Google and you know, like the Chrome group, you know, their browser group, mm -hmm. and ask them like, how is how is a digital marketer's life going to change based on these these big privacy changes? Perfect, perfect. There, let's get to question number four. Final fun question, Frank. Tell me about your first sale. My first sale um, in my career was convincing Peter Norton that he should get into the antivirus business. But most, most, uh, and that that uh, was one of my early successes. What uh, what I've found with Clever Mo is that our first um, sale was to a Disney Imagineer, Terry Harden, who was trying to create interest in these sculptures that she created of the Haunted Mansion characters at Disneyland. And so uh, what I found is that she had a Shopify store set up. All she really needed is an advertisement that would get people to come to her store, and then they would buy. Um, and that was a great experience because I could do it in a way that didn't require her to become a technologist. Instead, she became a digital marketer. Love it. Love it there. So, hey, Frank, you've got one minute and 28 seconds left. Uh -huh. You can do some promo time. Ask me a question. Talk about the weather, whatever you want, or we can end early. I'm flexible. Go for it. So what I'm finding lately is that Clever Mo is able to add artificial intelligence technology so that it can take a look at the landing page or your online store and create the advertisement for you. Um, this, this is a first in the industry. And so we just rolled this out this week. And so it's now available at the clevermo.com site. You start an account, you start an ad, and then it figures out what the messaging and the images should be for the ad. So you don't have to work with an ad agency necessarily if, if right. you don't want to. That, I love that there. So you've got 45 seconds left. Is there anything else you want to add or we can end early and that's okay. So next steps for us are to expand beyond Shopify and now support uh, uh, Square and Etsy and um, mm -hmm. uh, even Pinterest has its own uh, online uh, store for Pinterest users. So that's the direction that we're headed in now. Should be interesting to see where we're at in say a year or two. We've been around for three years now. Awesome, love it there. You pulled it off. Four questions in eight minutes and eight seconds. Frank, why is it eight minutes and eight seconds? Well, because 808 looks like Bob. I love it there. Hey, your website, say it real quick. Uh, you get it to it at clevermo.com. It's C-L-E-V-E-R-M-O-E.com. It's in the description. It's magic. Frank, thank you so much for being on. Tip of the hat to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And for everyone else watching or listening, I am legally required to tell you to like, share, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bell, whatever the heck the social media network tells you all to do. You all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.